Welcome back to Netball Zone for 2024. Tonight on the show, your fan favourites are back with E! News and Cruise Control. We catch up with all the teams to kick off the ANZ Premiership. And we have Irene Van Dyke live in studio where we celebrate 100 years of netball in New Zealand. All here on Netball Zone. Tēnā koutou kato, no mai, haere mai, Netball Zone is back for another season. Ko koni taere aho, ko Cruz Tangira, tēnē, Cruz kia ora, tēnā koe hoa. Tēnā koe, yeah, life is good, life is very busy. Um, obviously still working, getting back into netball, so things are good at the moment. Pihana koe, a big year for you, what, what are you up to? It is a very big year for me, I've gone back to Kura, which Cruz has done uh, previously and I'm absolutely loving it, I'm yeah. loving my journey, but I'm also very excited that netball starts this weekend, the ANZ Premiership. I mean, I don't know what we've been doing without I'm, netball, I can't wait. Well, the thing is, is that it's been such a long pre-season as well, obviously last year was shorter due to the uh, World Cup, so yeah, I'm so excited for this season, I'm on the Pulse and the Stars game, and I'm just excited to see the talent get out on court and showcase what they can do. Yeah, it feels like a long pre-season to us and we weren't even training, so <laughs> yeah. I can imagine what it's been like for the players. In other exciting netball news, uh, the Silver Ferns name their head coach, and it is Dame Nolene Toto are very excited about this. Yeah, and I think she deserves it as well. You know, she's put in a lot of work to get this team where they are. We haven't quite seen the results go our way in, in the past years, but, you know, hearing her interview post that, uh, that announcement, I think she's really ready to sort of change up the way that she coaches. She also mentioned that she's excited to, you know, relax the rules a little bit around players going overseas to get experience. So very excited uh, for Dame Noli and Totoa to take the reins again, and I can't wait to see what she does with the team. Well, I can't wait to hear from her, but we actually caught up with her last Thursday, so let's hear what she has to say. Yeah, look, I'm absolutely wrapped um, to be announced um, today. Went through the process, uh, which I find quite exciting and feel quite rejuvenated um, going through that. Sort of very clear about what needs to happen moving forward and where we could get those increases or the shifts, not only on court but also off court as well. So going through that process helped me to sort of dig deeper um, and really identify those clear areas. So <clears throat> because of that, I'm excited. You know, it's sort of like a, um, a reset to some degree, but also building upon the foundation that we've already set and the successes in and around that. Oh, pucky pucky that too, <laughs> because I'm excited. I think it's great to have Dame Nolling back there. We had success at the 2019 World Cup with her. Not so much success last year, no. even though there were injuries. But like she said, she's ready to reset. And I, it's incredible, I think, to what she can do with the players that she's got. Yeah, and we speak of the four-year cycle and obviously now is the beginning of that cycle. So what better way to come in, you know, refresh her system and, and I guess bring you players up into that Silver Ferns uh, team so they can get experience against big, you know, teams like Australia. Yeah, and I have no doubt uh, Dame Nolan will be watching every ANZ Premiership match which starts this weekend. However, we had the media launch on Monday where we saw uh, the captains of the teams and also the coaches. We are in front of the Auckland Museum today at the Auckland Domain for the season launch of the 2024 ANZ Premiership. So really cool that we start this weekend. Honestly, bring it on. It's going to be really tightly contested. A lot of the other teams have been able to retain and have a lot of continuity, so it'll be whoever can be as accurate. But I reckon the stars are going to be up there, man. Pre-season's been really good, actually. I think we've had a good variety of hard off-court trainings, bit of fun, team culture, connections, and then a solid amount of gameplay, actually, probably the most we've had in a pre-season. I think teams have strengths in their own way, but I th you can't go past the Mystics. They're champions from last year, they've been building the last few years, and retained a good amount of players from last year, but we're ready to take them. <laughs> Yeah, really excited. I've never been here before, so such a beautiful building and can't wait to see what the exhibition is like for the celebration of the 100 years because that's a pretty special milestone. Seeing the old hoop, it just kind of made me think, wow, in 100 years, look how far we've come. Netball is a massive part of my family. I think it's super cool to be able to actually really celebrate it and hopefully it's an awesome, well, I'm sure it will be an awesome season, the 100th year. I think really cool to look back with just a lot of respect for the people who have come before us. But yeah, just a, a cool milestone. You can't go forward without celebrating the milestones. 
Oh, we had a great day on Monday chatting to the captains, the coaches. They're all excited, as we said. But we heard from Kimi Poi there about the defending champions, the Mystics. Everyone's going to have their eyes on them. So let's have a look at who's in and who's out of this team, Cruz. Yeah, well, it's only two players out for this team, but two big players, Solly Fitzpatrick and Monica Faulkner. But if we look at the players that have come into the team, Catherine Hall is one name that I will mention. She's an up-and-coming defender. And I've heard big, uh, you know, raps about her, so I look forward to seeing her. Also, Hannah Glenn as well from, you know, the tactics. She'll be teaming up with Grace Becker and Phil Devoe. So, you know, excitement for this team right across the board. But you mentioned uh, Coco. They are defending champions. They've kept the core of this team. And, you know, when you do have that, that structure within your team for a number of years, it's quite hard to sort of penetrate that and, and I guess, get, get the better of them. So I expect big things from the Mystics this year. Uh, there's no excuse why they shouldn't reach the final, or at least, you know, reach the top two. Um, so I'm excited to see what they do and, you know, see where they, how far they go in 2024. I agree, and whether or not they can go back to back. But also, who are you going to pick for that goal attack position to play alongside Grace? Well, we only know Hannah Glenn and at goal shoot, but I'm very excited to see, to see her at goal attack. I think she'll offer a different sort of dynamic to that shooting circle. But we also know what uh, Phil Vu can do as well. So, you know, a big headache for uh, head coach Tia Winikere. That's it, a good headache to have. All right, we, as I said, we heard from Kimi Poi. She said they're ready to take on the Mystics this year. So let's have a look at the tactics and what we're expecting from them, Cruz. Yeah, well, we just mentioned Hannah Glenn. She's gone up to the Mystics. That big English import, uh, Laura Malcolm, has, has gone home and Paris Petra has gone up to the Pulse. But one big name that is not up there is Te Huingereo Sabi Rickett. She's come in as the assistant coach for uh, the tactics and I've heard some pretty, pretty good things um, so far about her, her position as a, as a head coach. But you look at players like that, Salvi Ricker uh, in that goal attack and also Erikana Pedersen, she announced her retirement but now she is back and I think she's going to add a lot more, you know, calmness and, and strength and, and versatility to that wing attack centre position for the tactics and maybe that's something that they've been missing because last year we didn't quite see a strong connection in the McCourt but we know what Erikana Pedersen can do so maybe this year we might see, you know, a connection that should really push this team into the finals. As like the Mystics, they've had a core team for a number of years but they haven't won a premiership so there's no excuse again for these for this team to really go all the way. There's not and I think Erikana Erikana sorry she looks great she's come back in great form and she also provides that leadership uh, for them across the court but also she knows what it takes to win a premiership. She sure she's does. won one with the Pulse yeah. so let's have a look at the Pulse and talk about what we can expect from them this season because like you said, they've been able to keep a core majority of their playing group. Yeah, well, look at that one player there, uh, Yongi. She played for Tonga at the World Cup last year. Also a niece of Monia Gerard. Yeah, so, so she comes from great netball oh. pedigree. Her auntie is Monia Gerard. She grew up watching her, being coached by her. Probably also, she used to come to our uh, netball clinics that Monia and I used to do back in Sydney. So she's also been yelled at by Monia. So she knows what to do out there on Exactly. Court. And Monia, one of the best defenders to ever grace the court of netball. So I look forward to her, but also the leader of this team as well. Kelly Jackson is captaining this court and they've also got a new coach here um, who has, is no stranger to what it takes to win a netball championship. She's been involved in the Pulse outfit for a number of years. She's worked under Vet McCourse and Jury as well. She's also won a few titles in the in and League. So I'm expecting big things from this team like I am the last two teams we spoke about. They've got some strong versatility right throughout the court and the leadership, like I just mentioned, is on a next level. So expect big things from the Pulse this year. Yeah, I do, and I think it's important that the players already have an established relationship with the new head coach, Anna, because she's been around the group. She's been there on the bench uh, helping coach when Yvette McCall's injury was the head coach. So I think they already have that established. So she could almost just come in. They already have that relationship. She knows what she can expect of players, and they already have that respect. So I can't wait to see. And one person I didn't mention is Keanu Williams as well. She's coming back from a, a pretty serious uh, incident that happened in her life a few years back. As you know, she was very up and coming with the magic as a shooter. She offers a lot of versatility. I was down in Ōtaki at the preseason, and I thought she did really well with her uh, shooting partner, specifically Tiana Mituado. So I'm excited to see what she does as well and the talent that um, the head coach is bringing through um, in the post, like P uh, Paris Petra um, as well. However, it is time for a break, but first there is an episode of Cruise Control. Here it is. Hello and welcome to a new season of Cruise Control, a segment where we teach you tips, tricks and rules of netball. Today we will be looking at the rule, short pass. This rule indicates that a player must be able to move through the space of the passer and the receiver. 
If the umpire deems that space is too small, short pass will be called and possession of the ball will be given to the opposition team. Guess who's back? It's me, and it's E! News. For the first time this year, I made it special for you. I brought the funniest person on my team, Claire, the Cobb, a Brian. Dun, 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 dun. Guess who's back? Guess who's back with the brand new track? Auntie E. Auntie E, spill the tea. With her Cobb. I'm Cobb, and I'm not a nub. <laughs> Yeah. If you were in Fast and Furious, who would you be? The fastest one? I haven't seen that movie. Heaven. And that is why people, Cobb's already got two speeding tickets this year. <laughs> oh. Now, you've come from Australia. Tell the people why you've got speeding tickets and why you don't know what that white van on the side of the road is. Because it's just a white van on grass and it looks like they're selling Fijoas. And they're not, they're actually getting your speed, so yes. Cobb, you do look a little bit like a knob with your hoodie off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a second to take it off, okay? Do you think with Magic you have the ability to do well this year? Yes, I think we have a really good team and it's a really exciting group and I think with some time we'll get our connections and stuff going and hopefully, yeah, challenge some of the top teams. Looking ahead, we play Mystics first. Mm -hmm. What are you most looking forward to in that game? I think we just know how Mystics play and they're quite clinical in their attack end and um, quite hard in defence. So I think it'd be really cool getting the opportunity to play against your old team, especially in round one, so I'm excited for that. Um, but yeah, I think we just have to bring our like, sort of best game. Swish. This is Auntie's Idol. I say a word, you guess the song. OK. OK, you got it? Shackles off my feet so I can dance. Ooh. I just want to praise you. I just want to praise you. You should let me love you. Let me be the one to give me all the things you want. ba 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 da ba 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 da ba 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 da ba 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 da Repeat, repeat, repeat. It's a Beyonce song. Yes, it is. You know it. OK, say bye to the people. Goodbye. Thanks for listening. Go away now. Oh, we love it. One of our favourite segments, <laughs> E! News, will be back for this season, as will Cruise Control. Great to see both these segments back. And just to see <laughs> another side of the players that E! brings out in them. I love seeing players sing as well. Maybe oh. you can give us a little oh, Cole. demo of how to sing. I Coco. can't <laughs> sing. We'll leave it up to Cobb. Thank you very much. Right, speaking of Cobb and the Magic, let's have a look at what they look like for this season. And they've got some exciting additions to the team. They do have some exciting additions. We obviously just uh, saw Claire O'Brien join the team as well. Ellie Wilsh is coming sort of into the team. She's been, you know, with the Steel in, in and around the ANZ Premiership. But look at those players that are out. Uh, Bailey Mess, Claire Kirsten, you know, that's some big experience that they're losing. But, you know, one person that is stepping into that shooting role is Xavier Tui, and Coco, I feel like she has the ability to go all the way this year. So do I, and it's great to see, uh, I think, this move for Xavier as a player and for her to play alongside the Silver Ferns captain in Emilia and Ekinacio, and to watch this combination grow, to see her grow underneath, I think, the wings of Emilia Ran. Uh, I can't wait for that. But the defensive end, I oh, look at that. <laughs> I don't know. We set her up for that one, didn't we? Putting her intercepts on here. <laughs> well, I think they have a really real opportunity to really showcase the power that they have in this defensive end. They have the ability to know to confuse the spacing and get up for the ball. But they're there or thereabouts, and at times, and they're not quite connected all the time. So I'd, I'd love to just see a little bit more cohesion within that defensive end because you know they have the ability to push these teams. They pushed the Magic last year, oh, the Mystics, sorry, last year. They beat them. So I feel like they can do that again this year as well. I agree. It's just I think for the Magic putting it all together out on court so who knows this could be their year will it be the year for the steel who unfortunately oh. didn't win any games last year but look at this they've got shannon saunders back they've got uh, Kate Heffernan as their captain this year to lead them through the midcourt. Jen O'Connell, she's back. She knows what it takes to win a premiership. So they've got a lot of great strength there, but also they're without some big names. Big names. Te Hungadeo, Sabi Rickett, Xavier Tui, Sam Winders, who's gone over to Australia uh, to obviously get experience in the Suncorp Super Netball. One player as well, George Fisher, who is still 
out with injury. She's been plagued by that knee injury for a while now, not, not quite healing from it. And we, when we speak about experience, she's one person that really understands that goal shooting well, back, uh, role sorry, back to front. And it's going to be a, a tough ask for these shooters to step into her place. Do you know O'Connell was coming in, Grace Namana, but you know, not having George Fisher and her stability in that goal shooting role, her ability to hold the space really well, is a big loss for the Steels. So, I'm going to say it, but it might be an uphill battle for the Steel this year. But I think they definitely will get some wins on yeah. the board. But as you said, and like for George Fisher, she was playing outstanding was. netball before her injury. So we wish her all the best and hopefully we can see her out on court. But I think it's been, it's indefinite for her return, isn't it? I, I think so. I don't think we'll see her in 2024 at least. Yeah, that's very unfortunate. All right, let's move on to the Stars and see what they can do. They went oh so close last year. They've got a lot of outs, a lot of ins, and it's what they can do. And I think maybe getting their player group to come together as one in this amount of time because there's been a lot of movement in and out of this team. A lot of movement. And if we talk about that movement uh, quickly, Jamie Hume, Gina Crampton, Simone Nathan, Ali Timu, Kayla Johnson, to name a few people. <laughs> Goodness me. The amount of experience that's walked out the door uh, for the Stars is is a lot. However, they do have, you know, some really experienced players still there. Maya Wilson in particular uh, is one and, she, you know, she's a captain again uh, this year, so I expected a big season from her. But, you know, her new shooting combination with Rani Samuelson will be really exciting. Um, and I just can't wait to see what, you know, this, this team does and the experience that they're going to need in order to really do well. But, you know, we speak about experience. Ellie Tumu, she was had the ability to turn over the ball left, right and centre, so losing a player like that is huge for her. They've brought in a young up-and-coming um, defender in Munro Nanoa, so I expect to see her out on court a little bit, but yeah, it's been a, a big loss for this. For they the also stars. have the likes of Kate Burley uh, rejoining them, so that's a big game for them down the defensive end. But another big game, Gina Crampton is being brought in as injury re replacement this weekend, so seeing Gina back will be great. Oh, and she's been getting a bit of court time in the uh, preseason for the Giants over in Australia as well. So I'm excited to see what she can do. I've, I've watched a little bit of the preseason and I thought she was absolutely fantastic. So a, a great sort of ring in for the Stars, if you will, uh, for the opening game against the Pulse on Sunday. Well, I agree. And the Stars, they actually had some Australian visitors uh, come over to help them with their preseason this year. Sisters, um, we're very privileged enough to have you make the trip here. I think we're quite excited. A lot of our girls haven't had the opportunity to be exposed to um, netball outside of New Zealand. So we're really, really grateful that you're here. And on behalf of us Vets and Girls, thank you so much for welcoming us so beautifully. Us, we spoke about the other day, we missed our ANZ Championship Day, so it's so cool to be back here to be able to play against both of you, both um, the teams of Magic as well on Sunday. So thank you so much for having us and hopefully we can have some really good hit outs. <laughs> We're very excited to be here in New Zealand. We used to play in the ANZ competition and we kind of miss having that sort of set up, but I think they went out and gave us a really good um, run for our money, especially at the end a little bit there. They really finished strong, but yeah, always great to come out against the New Zealand side. A lot of us, like I said, have never played up against the Aussie D, especially um, they do a man on D. They, they just grind you the whole time. When you look at the Vixens, they've got a few Aussie Diamonds in there, um, many experienced players. So I think it's good for us to have that sort of exposure so that we can really take that into our upcoming season for the ANZ Premiership. It's just something different, and that's why we wanted to come over here. We wanted to test ourselves out against other teams, you know. We know that New Zealand likes to play the zone defence, and I think that really tests our skill. We have to have really good vision, look over the mess, and then, you know, they play really physical as well. So I think it's a really good learning curve for our girls, and um, it's really exciting for us to be here and playing against the New Zealand sides. No, my hooky, my whanau. 
Welcome back and welcome on in to our guest, Irene Van Dyke. Eyes, it's so great to have you joining us for our first show of this season. How are you? How have you been? Oh, very good, thank you. It's lovely to be back. It feels like I haven't been here for ages, which is probably true. <laughs> but it is quite nice that netball season is starting. It's quite exciting. All the teams look very even, so she's going to be a banger. Well, you've also been very busy as well, as You're also the ambassador of the centenary this year, so how's that going for you so far? Oh, absolutely fantastic. It is really nice to, to go through the journey and see where Nepal has started and where we've ended up now. And, you know, like looking through all the ladies that stood up and, like, paved the way for what Nepal looks like now, it's quite heartwarming and um, it's a lovely time to celebrate what the woman has done. Well, speaking of celebration, we got to celebrate you earlier this year, Eyes, and a big congratulations because you're inducted into the Netball Hall of Fame. So how was that and how was the evening? Oh, it was the most amazing <laughs> evening. You know, we spent it with a lot of Netball people, hearty Netball people, and we've had the, the likes of um, Dame Lois, you know, that left her speech there. And we had just fantastic Sandra Each, Laura Langman, Casey, you know, Ruth Aitken, just so many incredible women that it's just so special. And you, it's overwhelming mm. to be in that, in that setting and it is just so, so lovely to be part of it. Well, I, I guess it would have brought back a lot of great memories as well between yourself and the other inductees. But as we mentioned, we are celebrating 100 years of netball within this country. So what can fans expect from that celebration? Well, we've had, um, we launched the Centenary website where that covers pretty much the history of netball. And it's been a long one. <laughs> um, and then we have the birthday weekend, um, which will be a big party on the 21st of May. And that will be celebrated right across New Zealand. And then we have the launch of um, Netball in the Auckland Museum in September, and that will run for six months. So to look through the journey of what Netball has done and um, little bits and pieces of what is displayed there. Um, and then all the centres are celebrating Netball in all different ways and celebrating their own people in their own ways. Mm. Yeah, and it's great to see, I think, looking at the history and going back through the Netball archives as we saw. But Eyes, if we go back to your archives, your history, <laughs> your playing days in the ANZ Premiership, and a highlight for you, I'm assuming, has to be going back to 2012 and winning that Premiership with Magic and how special uh, your journey was in the ANZ Premiership. Absolutely, without a doubt. You know, and we had to go and play the final in Australia and um, it was just incredible. You, you have no idea how hard it is. But the thing is, though, we had a, a chartered plane that brought all our spectators over to um, to the game, wow. and I swear, I think we had more 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 spectators than they had because it was just one massive celebration at the end of that. It was so good. Well, as I, I want to also talk about your Ferns achievements, and I'll lay them out for you. 2023, <laughs> a World Champ. 2006, a Commonwealth Games Champ. 2010, a Commonwealth Games temp, Champ. I mean, you've done it all in netball, really. So what would be, I guess, one or two memories that stand out for you? 2000, 2003 World Champs in Jamaica will definitely be one of the biggest ones. And I think the fact that our team has has suffered and we played so hard and we and worked the so went hard. The I... lights went out <laughs> and we had we covered every what if scenario under the sun. They could have thrown anything at us. Hey, even Timaparo got sent off. That's right. You know what? Yes. Everything happened <laughs> and we still nailed it. And that was that was one of the best experiences. And then 2010 Commonwealth Games in in, in India, you know, it was phenomenal. It went into double over time yes. and then a little more. And I was flag bearer that, that year as That's well. Right. And that is pretty spectacular, having the whole of New Zealand behind you. And, you know, it is, it's just one of the proudest moments. Mm. Oh, well, as we love having you here. We could chat about netball all evening with you. And so we're going to keep doing that and have a look at the games that we have on this weekend. And we start this Saturday with the Hobbiton Cup between the Magic and the Mystics. It's a good old rivalry. You would know, Eyes, <laughs> us that played for Magic. We love playing the Mystics. Uh, both teams have won the Hobbiton Cup two apiece. And I'm looking forward to the matchup between Grace and Wake here right there and against 
all the defenders because how do you stop her? Yes, and for game two, we are in Takanini where the Stars are hosting the Pulse. Another big match coming up uh, for your Sunday afternoon. From what I hear, it is a sold out crowd as well. So I expect to see big numbers turn up for that game. But I'm looking forward to the young experience uh, defenders like Paris Mason, but also the experience of shooter uh, Maya Wilson and her combination with Amorangi Malisala and Rani Samuelson as well. Southern Derby, Tactics versus Steel. Um, the Steel obviously has a lot of young ones and if they grow in their confidence like they've done last year, hopefully they'll be able to smack it out this year. Tactics look slick. <laughs> so they will definitely want to stamp down and win the first game. I agree, so I'm going to ask you both, put you on the spot, who's going to win it this year? Word on the street, tactics look pretty slick. I'm, I'm sticking with my sticks, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you both for joining us, Irene. Thank you, as always, that is us from Netball Zone uh, this week. But we'll bat, be back every Wednesday night, Eo Wiki, Eo Wiki, every Wednesday night. Thank you so much. ANZ Premiership starts this weekend, Cruz. Yeah, it starts this weekend. Starts to, uh, on Saturday, sorry, down on Hamilton, and we'll go right through to Monday.